Today, you guys, welcome. I want to talk about Photoshop and I want to dive a little bit deeper into the basics of Photoshop and talk about masks. So, firstly, if you haven't watched last week's Photoshop video, you should. We talked all about layers and the different types of layers. And I want you guys to think of last week's video as a prerequisite for this week's video because I'm going to be building on a lot of those concepts that we talked about last week. Also, random side note those of you who don't want to learn Photoshop, I have a metric crap ton of Lightroom videos. That cover all of Lightroom from years and years and years ago. Excuse the like terrible green screening.、Um, excuse me. Not my finest hour, but they're, they're there. So definitely check those out. I linked a few of them down in the description, but make sure you guys watch those if you're more of a Lightroom person. Anyway, with Photoshop, I want to talk about masks. And you guys, layers and masks are probably the two most key fundamental things to learn in Photoshop. If you have a really good understanding of layers and masks, you can really go on to do anything you want to in Photoshop because it all builds from that point, which is really, really cool.、Um, it kind of allows us to set a very firm foundation. And then we can build upon that very, very easily. So let's take a look at what a mask is. A mask is a way, at its simplest form, to turn a layer on or turn a layer off in certain parts of a photograph. The problem is, I think a lot of people throw around these little mantras to learn, like white reveals and black conceals, white is on, black is off. There's all these different like, sayings with masks. And I think people get so worked up in Photoshop that they don't take a second and just think about like, what the fundamentals actually are. Let's think about it. If we have a layer and we learned about pixel bearing layers and blank layers and adjustment layers last week, if you just take a layer, You can turn that layer, meaning disable it in certain parts of the image if you want to. And that's what a mask does. It allows a layer to have an effect some places and not have an effect other places. The problem is the on, off, or reveal, conceal, or all those different sayings is they don't really get to the core understanding of what you're actually doing. Doing. So, I want to kind of dive into that a little bit more today. But the other thing I want you guys to understand is that we need to learn the two colors of a mask, and that's white and black. I guess they're not colors, the two shades or tones of a mask, white and black. Any areas of a mask that are white mean that the layer in question is having an effect in that area of the photograph. And any areas that are black on the mask, the layer is not having an effect. In those areas. That's where you have the term like、uh, white reveals, black conceals, or white is on, black is off. Same kind of thing. White means the layer is affecting that area, black means the layer is not affecting that area. So let me give you guys an example here. I've got an image here that I took in Alaska, and let's say that I want to darken the sky. I don't want to darken the whole image, I just want to darken the sky area in the photograph. What I can do is go up to layer. New adjustment layer and go to curves. Now, you could also use the Belgian dark chocolate, the light chocolate dipped cookie button, like we talked about last week, or the adjustments panel, whatever one you wanted to. But I'm going to do it this way and I'm going to name it Darken the Sky. I always name my layers and they hit OK. And I'm going to drag that curve down to darken. Now, we could make 20 videos on curves. That's not what I want the goal of this video to be about. I'm just going to apply a darkening curve to my image. I think Jeff made a video earlier on curves. You guys can check that out、uh, as well. I'll link it down in the description. So I'm going to make an adjustment. Now, we learned last week that every layer, adjustment layer, has a little button that we can double click on and we can bring the adjustment part of the layer back. The problem right now, though, is when I drag this curve, it's not just affecting the sky, it's affecting the whole image. And that's because by default, when you make a new layer, it will always be affecting the entire image versus just part of the image. The way we know this is by actually looking here in the layers panel, right next to the button and next to the name of the layer, there's this white box. You might be seeing those for years and years and years and never know what they were. That white box is actually the mask. That's the mask that we're referring to. And I said earlier that white on a mask means that that layer is having an effect in all of the areas that are white. So, how much of the mask is white right now? The whole thing. Meaning that this layer, this curves layer, is affecting. Everywhere on the image. There's no black areas on that mask. So let's think for a second. And this is where I recommend so much that people just stop and take a moment and think about this. What is the goal of this layer? 
the goal of this layer is to darken the sky. What do we want the foreground to do? We want it to stay exactly the same. So if we learn that white makes the change happen and black stops the change from happening or allows the layer to work and stops the layer from working, what do we want this mask to look like? We probably want the sky to be white and the foreground to be black. We don't want any change to happen in the foreground. Well, how do we get part of an area of a mask black? You actually can just use a paintbrush. If I grab a paintbrush here, a um, little keyboard shortcut, B for brush, will get you there really quickly. If I grab a paintbrush and I grab the right paint color, little pro tip again here, sometimes you'll have a color or a shade of gray over here in your uh, little color picker. There's a couple buttons here we can use. One is to the lower left of the color picker that we can click on. That will set your colors to white on top and black on the bottom. And then there's actually a little bendy arrow you can click on and that will flip white and black. Whatever colors on the top, that's the one that's going to come out of your paintbrush. Now, pro tip to the pro tip, pro tip, pro tip keyboard shortcuts for this. The letter D will always, D for uh, default, will always set you back to white and black as your colors. If you've got like red and green or blue and yellow, D will set you back to white and black. And then X will flip the colors. X will let you have black on top or white on top, flips them back and forth. So D and X are very useful here. So I can hit X and make sure that I have black on top. Thirdly, very important that you guys look and make sure that you are selected on the mask itself. Remember we learned last, last class, last video, that we are going to lay paint down wherever, whatever layer we're currently clicked on. We need to be sure we're clicked on that mask in order for this to work. So black paint, clicked on the mask, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and paint, and everywhere that I paint, it appears that the image is getting brighter. But here's the thing that I want you guys to understand. This is where people are always like, whoa, what's happening, right? Image is getting brighter. It's not getting brighter. It's returning to how it was before this layer took, a, took an effect. Think about it, we're disabling this layer. What's this layer doing? It's darkening. If we disable darkening, it's gonna appear that we're lightening that area. Really that area is just turning back to as it was out of the camera or as it was when we opened it in Photoshop. To prove this, if I turn the eyeball on and off, we can see that only the sky is changing right now. Now, obviously, I would do a much better job painting. I'd use a soft brush and do some things. But as an example, let's break this down step by step. We have an adjustment. It is saying make the image darker. Then we have a mask that now is turning off that adjustment in the foreground area. We know because it's black down there and it's leaving that adjustment on in the sky area. Now, one more little thing I wanna point out. If you start painting and you don't release your click, you won't see the change you've made with painting in the little mask picture in the layers panel. You actually have to release your click before that adjustment will be updated down to the little mask area. It's still making an adjustment, but just some people look down in that mask and they're like, well, it's not changing as I paint. You just gotta release your click and then you're there. Now, cool thing. We can undo this by just painting white, right? If we paint a little too far, we paint too much black, let's just flip our paint colors. Okay, so pro tip, pro tip said X flips our paint colors. Let's paint back. And now we're painting white, we're allowing that change to take effect in those areas. That should be pretty cool, right? Like think about that, we literally have control of where the adjustment happens in different parts of our photograph. Now, I wanna take this a step further. Let me delete this adjustment layer here. This mask thing works on adjustment layers, it works on pixel bearing layers, it works on all different types of layers. So check this out. I have another image over here. I'm gonna use the move tool to move it over to this first image that we we're talking about. So here we go, we have a tree, little really, really, really crappy composite, that's okay. But this is a layer just like anything else. We can see it's on layer one and the background is beneath it. Well, it doesn't have a mask right now, right? We see no white box there. So sometimes you have to add a mask to a layer. You just need to do it. And if you see a mask, don't add another one, just leave it. But if you don't see a mask, you need to add one. Well, there's a couple ways we can do this. We can go up to layer, layer mask, and reveal all. Or we can go down to the bottom of the layers panel and we can click this little front loading washing machine button. It's the little square with the circle in the middle of it. And if I click on that, that's gonna give me a mask. Now. 
what color is the mask? It's all white. Well, what does all white mean? All white means that this layer, what is this layer? A picture of a tree is visible everywhere, is having an effect everywhere. And sure enough, we can see the entirety of this tree. Well, how do we get rid of part of the layer? Well, we could grab a paintbrush. We could use black paint. Again, X is the keyboard shortcut for that. And we can paint. And anywhere that I paint, assuming that I'm clicked on my layer mask, on the mask for this given layer, it's gonna turn off this image. That's pretty cool. Now, some of you who have been using Photoshop for a while, you might say, why not use the eraser tool, right? We could erase parts of that image. The problem with the eraser tool is when you save and you close, those image, those pixels are permanently gone. With a mask, if we save and we close, that mask is still there. We can open this image a couple years later, grab some white paint and paint over those same areas and restore that information back. It's super, super cool. So masks are just a way to enable or disable a layer in certain places. And you guys, the thing that I want to recommend to you is that you just take a minute and step back because so many people get so in the steps in Photoshop and they don't stop and think like, what am I conceptually actually trying to do? It's very simple. There are layers and there are ways to turn those layers on and turn those layers off. So go ahead and play with this. Give it a try because it's really cool and it's really powerful. White allows that layer to happen. Black stops that layer from happening. If you guys have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. Hopefully you like this video. I'm trying out this new basic Photoshop series. Let me know if you like it. Hit a like, let me know. If you wanna subscribe, there's more videos coming every single week. In fact, next week's video, I think I'm gonna do selections in Photoshop and how you can make more accurate masks versus using a paintbrush. So hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, drop a comment if you have a question. Special thanks to Canon for sponsoring this video. You guys are awesome. They provided these cinema cameras for us to use and bring this content to you guys. Thanks everybody, I appreciate it. You're awesome, keep shooting, keep Photoshopping, keep learning, it's so much fun. Also, a little side note, we're a photography school. We teach classes from one day long to nine months long. We're not just YouTube, so you guys can come learn from me or Jeff or any of the team uh, here at the school. We're in Montana, we're pretty great, we think we're pretty great. Other people think we're pretty great too. You guys should check us out, links down in the description. Thanks everybody, I appreciate it. Woo! Keep shooting, keep photographing, we love you. Yay.